a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings a bell and the member show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. A little vanity mixed with some insanity On the morning show with GMP Um, comments um, and like really like close up to the screen so I could see it. I must get my eyes tested. Good morning, everyone. How morning. are you? All I'm today? just looking at the comments. <laughs> <laughs> the Good Morning Portugal show sponsored. You are That's naughty, Carl. Well, it was. I was uh, carrying on from yesterday. I was w watching the uh, the beginning of the show yesterday where I was singing. There may be trouble ahead, and uh, there's you saying. Love, love, we're live, we're live. Did you, did you hear that from yesterday? I said, yeah. lovely little outtake, lovely little outtake. It is Troubleshoot Tuesday. And should I say, not should I say, I always say, and I didn't say this morning, Hola, bon dia, gria. Tudo bem, como estás? How are you, dear friends, gumpers, all around the world tuning in this morning? Hope you're well. Um, do you feel like this? This is our aim, to have you feeling like this in the morning. <laughs> That's living right. life. To the, that's living life to the fullest, isn't it? No? Yeah. Uh, who that's are those people? Are they, are they jumping into a vat of red wine? Yeah, they they they, they would have been doing that maybe a month ago, and or you know, ah, at the end of the year. um wine season. Yeah. Yeah, and they're tre tre treading the grapes, you know, and, and squashing the grapes with their feet. And they might have rolled their trouser legs up and thought to themselves, you know what? I'm just getting in here. I'm going to get my Speedos on and I am jumping in. Now, you can go to a winery and throw yourself in like that, body hair, everything. But you can't go to a swimming pool without a hat on here. <laughs> Do you know what? That makes no sense. So you can be really hairy git and wear a swimming cap. Yes. But you can still, I mean, you could get into a swimming pool with a yes. cap on, yes. but then you've got all your chest hair, all your leg hair, back yes. hair, and also your um, beard. Hair. Yes, yes. That makes pubic no hair. sense. The friend of Bugs Bunny, pubic hair. And yes, but and, and, and the interesting <laughs> thing is you can't you can't buy a bottle of swimming pool water, can you? And, and it doesn't say on the back of a bottle of swimming pool water, this water has been carefully fermented for your protection and only people using caps and hair snoods have been allowed to swim in it. Whereas you drink yeah. wine and like guys like that have been jumping about in it uh, early, early on. So there you go. Just a little thought. But the point, the, the reason I shared it is because this is how we would like people to feel as a result of watching a Good Morning Portugal show. Although we can't. Well, hairy, hairy and wine soaked. Puts, this show puts hairs on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> and might end up in wine. Then that's why they don't export wine around the world from Portugal. Just in case I imagine everyone fun. sat at home going, ew, ew. Maybe Ooh. they are, but they'll soon get over themselves when they're opening that bottle of red and smelling it and going, I just don't know what the top notes are in here, but they're driving me wild. Give me a glass of that stuff. Right. Um, the pheromones. I need, to, I need you to, yes, exactly. Um, I need you, yeah, someone else's hormones that you haven't met. It's like going to um, a nightclub or some, you know, a blindfolded ball. Right. Um, I would like to put a ticker tape. The screen is looking very naked and bare. And I'm actually looking at last week's Troubleshoot Tuesday ticker tape, where we talked to the wonderful David Hayward, the naked pastor, who wasn't naked in that sense. It was his truth that was naked. Uh, so I need to change that, um, if, um, if you don't mind, because we've got a fantastic show lined up, and I've done nothing about it quite frankly it's uh mm. it, and i'm gonna i'm changing it troubleshoot tuesday why why have a hashtag with you know the word what? Trouble in it, right do you know what with troubleshoot tuesday yes i need i need some new headphones i i've put these on and literally yeah. about five seconds before you went live there's this new sound in in both ears which is new rumble, it's only like this one that's working issue. and it sounds like i'm underwater what's going on 
Uh, you didn't clean your ears properly after the shower this morning. <laughs> I don't know. But what I need you to do is read some comments while I while I figure out the ticker tape. Okie doke. So you get the technology guess. and I'll um I'll, I'll I'll do a bit of Exactly. I guess like we'll be here polishing the know. fine surfaces. Okie dokes. So uh, we've got lots of people saying good morning this morning and that's so lovely. But anyway, let's um I'll start I'm I'm see I cheat on, I, do I don't I don't do the toothpaste properly, do I? I always yeah, go right in the middle. The, please, if you wouldn't mind, start at the top of the comments and work your way through. They are arranged chronologically. Okie dokes, okie dokes. We've got a few from Thunderduck. Good morning, Thunderduck. He's saying, oh. Bon dia, alegria, gumpers. Deep Ooh. thought, procrastination is a cunning thief and it steals the most important element in your life. Time. That's from Robert mm. Davies. Yes. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, I'm going to leave that well, one for you. I'm going to start because you you're this. much better at pronouncing than I am. Um, who has in, a weekly lesson? In Canessa, on the now, her pal, Taurus Barang, and in Gang, Ting Razao. In a house with no bread, everyone screams and nobody is right. My Portuguese teacher will be laughing so much hearing me say that. In a household yeah. without food, everyone argues. There is, do you know what? You, you um, struggle with with um that i think because you've never grown up with siblings and i have and sort of being in our household with all the kids um it's it's an interesting learning for you isn't it about how we share food yeah <laughs> did you say share <laughs> um well, I anyway did. thunder duck adds who all knew right. the portuguese were the first europeans to reach japan in the 16th century they left their mark on japanese with no words oh sorry with words like pan pow for bread and sabato, sabado, uh, sabado meaning Saturday. Sabado, correct. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Let me put the sabado never in iron the a four leaf clover. Press pressing your luck is not a good idea. Our little boy oh, Dippy, you might know, argue oh, with that. No, 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 no. You're doing the dad jokes already. I think this is a disaster. Not, you, not I just squeeze the. You tube told me to go right from the start. <laughs> That's exactly oh, what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hold okay. those though. Oh my goodness! Oh well, you should have been more specific. And like slug was good. Neck. I think that's James well saying von dia gumpers. Feliz terça todos. Como valturo. Okay. And he's also saying find something to be happy about every day and every hour, even if only for a few minutes, and if possible, moment to moment. That's Greg Braden, heart math. I have to say, I am fond of a bit of Greg yeah. Braden. Um. Know, and just, then the well, Yogi Berra oh, quote of the day. It's like really. deja vu all again. What? A, wait, good, I can't good. hear anything because it sounds like I'm in a washing machine or under a tunnel. I, I feel like, yeah, it's really, it's really bad. Anyway, yeah. we've got a um, God Squad tip of the day today. I did actually yeah. read this earlier. Thank you, Ian, um, Coach Turner. Um, it sounds like what happens, you know, if I'm on the floor and I've fallen down drunk and exercise your stomach muscles lie on your back with your arms at your side <laughs> keeping both legs straight lift them off the ground then move them up and down alternatively 10 rep. 10 reps it's not only is she underwater uh, she's now frozen uh, what's going on uh, down there um, that's too much of a good thing can be taxing this is very sweet how people are, are putting in the, all these little sayings uh too much is always better than not enough that's from Thunder Duck. Yeah, They're kind of moment. really vibing here, aren't they? They're having a bit Absolutely. of um, a, yeah. a quote bromance. J.R. Uh, Bob Dobbs is a figurehead of a parody religion, the Church of the Subgenius. I don't even get that. Yes. What's all that about? Which bit do you not get? Take a oh. breath. That's right. So which? what don't you get? What's going on here? What's happening now? Um, well, who is he? J.R. Bob Dobbs. He's the he's the from the search the church search of the chub gene no the church of the sub genius figurehead of the parody religion is you see the interesting thing about oh, this okay. where is that, where is that comment even when you're parodying religion you can still come up with some cracking wisdom which I suspect he has done here too much is always better than not enough there you go now yeah. that sounds like a religion I should take up at least I qualify he is a bon viveur <laughs> okay I get that. <laughs> All right. And there's another one from J.R. Bob Dobbs, the number one yeah. phony or fraud of the 20th century. In its yeah. January the 1st, 20, uh, 2000 issue, a time internet, a time internet based poll named J.R. Bob Dobbs, the number yeah. one phony or fraud. Yes, that's right. Sorry, I can't concentrate because of this ear thing. It well, sounds like I'm your, talking to myself. Check, like, I'm going to put a video on. Go and get another pair of headphones. We can't, we can't well, tolerate this. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna get Digby's you know game that, ones. You know that, yeah, me. you know that dark corner of the room where that smells of old sandwiches and um, <gasps> has a lot of ele electronics in it. That is, yeah, you go get it from over that part of the room. I'm gonna play a video now. Um, just a little, little bit of a utter, uh, utter naughtiness. Here we go. <laughs> Natalie Imbruglio. Uh, oh, no, you, we heard you say that, I'm afraid, on the show this morning. And um, I'm going to have to mute her, aren't I, before she starts swearing anymore. This is unbelievable. This, but, oh, she's got the USB headphones now. They're not going to Well, maybe they will work, actually. That could be interesting. Let's see, if, let's see what happens here this morning. Um, are, are you hearing us, Mrs. M? Let's see what happens. And she's got a, a time lag on it. I don't know what's happening. It is certainly a happy Tuesday, Francis. Great to have you here. And you have to eat fast. Oh, when, you, when you've got siblings, that's right. Um, hoddle, hold on, don't laugh. I've seen you I've seen you having a go at cryptocurrency all this week, Andrew. Uh, I uh, imagine you'll be saying the same things about uh, um, fiat currency quite soon. Um, okay, let's go. I'm gonna, I've got to scroll back before the squeezing of the toothpaste tube that is our comment stream. Mrs. M, can you hear us? She's got that face which shows us she can't hear us, right? I don't think so. Okay. I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get her to come up here, and then I'm going to manfully wade into that situation down there and get the headphones working. Do I? I think I need to put another video on, don't I? Okay, let me just do that. Uh, I'm going to put the video on of Spain. Ah, I can't believe I'm doing this. But thank you, Doug, for this. One thing I always enjoy about coming to Portugal is um well you're never actually too far away from the spanish border and that's precisely what i'm going to do today we're going to cross over to spain well here we are crossing the guadiana river bridge and just for the time being saying goodbye to the algarve <laughs> dramatic wasn't it can you hear me okay there hello mrs m hello mrs m i can't hear you <laughs> can you hear me now hello okay we seem to have some technical issues um carl um has swapped into mrs m seat and so i'm in the hot seat now you can see all my wrinkles up close and personal you know with all this good lighting anyway um we've got so many comments here um 
I don't even know where Carl got up to, but we've had um, a few technical issues there and um, we are now going to continue with the show. So there's a lot of comments coming in, loads of people saying, Bon dia, alegria, todos, happy Tuesday from Francis and Co. Hello. Um, Deagle <laughs> said something about Chaos Luisa, which is really good. What about Ronaldo speaking about Man United? Surely a move to, uh, surely a move um, to sporting in January. Don't understand that. I'm not really a sporty person. You have to eat fast, says Phil Cooklin. And I think that's um, kind of the um, rules of what happens when you're in a big family. Will Thompson saying, if everyone is crypto mining, now we can solve the energy crisis. Yes, there's a bit of crypto activity going on at the moment, isn't there? Solar Life Portugal at peak. It's saying, good time to invest in EXP Realty, FTT and FTX. The market is prime. Uh, Phil's coming back. Might be a connection to the laptop. <laughs> Try every connection. Uh, that was actually on a... Um, on a um, like a, a standalone unit, um, we've tried a few things now, so I don't know what's going on. Um, mm, 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 where did we get to? They're coming in thick and fast. So uh, Will Thompson to the moon. Um, not sure I get that one um, for tritium. I don't know if that's a crypto um, reference. Anyway, we've got Sue saying, Bon dia, Luisa, Carl, and fellow Gumpers. You know who you are. We sure do. Um, and there's trouble with tribbles. What are these tribbles? Are these all like a type of new crypto? Who knows? Anyway, Carl, I sent you an image of JR Bob Dobbs. Um, we need Carl's phone for that. And I haven't got it here really at the moment. But I do like this comment from Pete from Solar Life Portugal saying, Should Doug really film someone peeing into the sea? <laughs> Do you know what? I really love um, Doug's sort of intimate views of things. I, I really love it. Suze is saying, I squeezed out the last bit of Portuguese brown toothpaste. I liked it. No, can't remember the name, but it was good and much less than familiar brands. Um, it's funny, isn't it? When you go away and 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 you, you like fall in love with something you're using and then you can't get it um, back home. It's, it's kind of disappointing. Um, Carpe Diem is saying, man down. Um, and there's Carl. Carl, you're coming through with a noise. <laughs> I always do, don't I? <laughs> That's really echoey. Do I always sound like that? that, that no, I've bad. improvised here. I've improvised. But can we stop focusing on the problems here now? We've got, at some point, we have to move on with the show. Now, okay. uh, this, is good as, this is as good as it's going to get, I think. Okay. Is that all right with you? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got right. a bomb deal. What happened to here was you didn't restart the computer, did you? No. Now, what happens when you go into when you start doing something as important as the Good Morning Portugal show? Not restarting the computer is like going into a war. We're not hearing any of this. You're you're stuttering and spluttering and all. You're not hearing, still not hearing. Unbelievable. No, you're, all you're of right. my best material. All of my best material. Always <laughs> I'm guessing right. what you're saying. I should have re restarted the computer. Um, and and actually, I would say it's yeah, so okay. a user error of the person that was last using it at like two o'clock this morning, which was you. You know, when you finish using it, that's when you should like log off so it's ready for the next person that's how i see it what do you think i mean how do things work in your household you know if you're sharing technology um uh portugalish is saying carl i can barely hear you um anyway I should let's, just let's get on <laughs> he's uh doing his best mute impression now um francis is saying Got to still watch the interview. Think Ronaldo must play Portugal again. Only country he's played in that he hasn't won a title with. I'm hoping it wasn't sporting in that case, but I do want it for him. Okay, so there's a bit of a, um, a football convo going on in the background. Portuglish GoFundMe in FTT tokens. Um, Carl the remix. <laughs> we got Portuglish saying the man cave is starting a new token. Coin purse. Interesting. Um and under the water, that's what uh, James is saying. That is how you've been sounding, actually. Deagle is saying, yeah, yeah, a little bit. When in Portugal, yeah. I always bring back two jars of Delta coffee and three bags of filter coffee. I savor them until my next trip to restock. It's an interesting thing. I, mean, I wonder what we would pick up if we were to go back to the UK. Like what Portuguese Simples. brand would, sorry? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> I was hoping I couldn't be heard when I said that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I heard you muttering in the background there. And uh, Thunderduck has come in saying it's all Cole's fault. He, he. Yes. Well, there we go. Anyway, like a Scotsman sparring. What is that all about? Hmm. Anyway, have we got a guest today, Carl? Or is it just too yes. early? To come in? Yes, we have. We have two fantastic guests this morning. I And uh, they are not um, divers or, or um, you know, aquatic people. And I wasn't setting up a special sound effect oh, okay. so I could speak to them. Um, we've got the amazing Joao Oliveira at nine, and uh, maybe you and I can sit next to each other at that point, because we don't want to be putting our guests through this, do we? But we've got Joao Oliveira at nine, and he's, of course, our sustainable Portugal world. But what he's offered to do today is show us how to look for land and property uh, with a bit of an insider's view. That's amazing. I mean, that's that's a really, really yeah. great idea. Yeah, um, and then at 9.30, we've got Paula Svensson, who, it could be Svensson, it could be Swenson. I'm, I'm going to find out how to pronounce that correctly when she joins us at 9.30. She is a Goish-based artist. Oh, Joao's here as well already. Um, she is a Goish-based artist with uh, an exhibition starting uh, this week, uh, and she's uh -huh. going to be tell us, telling us all about her exhibition and how she's inspired by nature. And that is what unites our guests this morning. They're both yeah. inspired by nature. One, a permaculturist and a Renaissance man part of the uh, urban, uh, the part of the rural renaissance of Portugal, I would say, and that'll be João Oliveira, and artist inspired by nature, Paula Swenson. You see, we don't just throw this together, even though it sounds like it, with the technology, uh, we don't we don't just chuck it together. <laughs> uh, we have we have wonderful, wonderful guests to, for you today, and with that lovely connection. And it's, in, it, it's moved me to change the name from Troubleshoot Tuesday, which is all quite aggressive, isn't it? I mean, the reason for that was because, you know, we want to help people sort, solve their Portuguese problems out um, or anything in moving to Portugal. But I, I'm not I'm not liking the idea of Troubleshoot Tuesday anymore. And, and I'm renaming it, christening it this morning, Inspiration Tuesday, because that's what our two guests Ooh, bring that in. That sounds much morning. nicer. That Can sounds, that sounds nice. Like like <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a few minutes then before we bring on Joao. He's given us a thumbs up in the um in the back to, to yeah. let us know that he's ready. That's always thumbs great. up in the back. Ooh. Oh, that sounds that sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Anyway. Yes. <laughs> Jim White's joining us this morning. Hey Jim. Sharing technology. Too many cables for iPad, iPhone, computer ad charge, adapters, and plugs. The biggest source of conflict here in Porto. Do you know what? We've also got to contend with three kids um, who also have their technology needs as well. And so things uh, like um we've got how many setups have we got? One, two, three. We've got like three like steady like permanent setups and we've also got lots of technology floating around the house all day it's it's bonkers um so i i hear you there jim um with thunder duck is saying aquatic people i'm not sure what that's in reference to but i'm liking this from portuguese we're making the man cave calendar ladies what well, you're making the man cave calendar about ladies are you dressing up as ladies or is that an invitation yeah, for us ladies right. i'd um, buy that I'd buy that. <laughs> Portuguese, let me know. I want to know about some of the poses you're going to be putting through. Like, you know, who's have you got enough men for each month? You know, some of you doubling up. Um, I'll do it. Please don't, please don't model anything, Carl. What are you doing? Oh, he's going for his best catalogue poses, I think. Oh, my goodness. This is a bit of live improv. Carl, we can't even see you. That's terrible. That's my... <laughs> he's, trying his, he's trying his best catalog pose, but it's just not it's not working. You, that's that's more like it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um I, I'm guessing Portugal, she could actually contact the um wine vat people and, and do a kind of boozy one, couldn't you? Um, sort of like naked well, hair. You could do it just like the show needs to be sponsored by Specsavers. If they're naked, they might also like to tie it up with some uh, microscope, telescope, or spectacles providers for the ladies who, and, and gentlemen who might like to peruse <laughs> such a product. Yeah, I'd like to see the prototype. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> Carl, you have a wonderful opportunity to do a tunes advert with your unique audio. That's a good okay. point there. Not a second class like... return to Dottingham, please. 
Some people are old enough to remember that. You'll only understand that if you grew up in the 80s in the UK. PT Country Bear is saying, if you go to Goish, eat at a place Goish. The food is incredible. Let us know, what were you eating there? Um, I'm always interested in feeding myself. Portuguese, can you... can anyone else understand, Carl? No. It, I mean, <laughs> they, I don't think they mean the con- he doesn't mean the the uh, sound quality. He means the content there, doesn't he? I don't know. I think he's referring to your poses. But anyway, Newbie Nets here, Portuguese. I've been waiting for this. You've made yes. a you've made as many people happy today, Andrew. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Will Thompson saying, "You'll own nothing and be happy. Let's buy some land." Seem in conflict with it with each other to me do you know what i don't think anyone here is actually saying you'll own nothing and be happy um but i'm very happy to learn more about buying land um thunder duck portuguese he needs to turn on the closed captions um yeah you are new vianette from um portuguese of course and francis the computer took troubleshoot tuesday literally yeah um, i think that was one of the dangers of um naming um a program so disastrously um ladies get your calendars yes well let us know we'll we'll vlog them in the um what do you call your thursday marketplace carl what do i call my thursday marketplace you've got such a fine grasp of what we do here haven't you oh look people are putting nice words of wisdom on the screen that's nice and what is that that market thing you do on a thursday oh what is it? like the um what's the it called store the gumper the gum- store we we'll have got, to them. There you go. We'll get behind that. Don't you worry. Okay. We've got lots of guys. Um, okay. This That's is what we're worried about. At least Carl has his pants on. Actually, yes. <laughs> on this occasion. Okay. So lots of comments are coming on the mug. Of course, you're going to do mugs too. That's not a bad idea. Um, so it's going to be very much like the fire fireman kind of calendar they're probably raising money for the bombay rush as well to be fair. Oh, okay carpe diem saying health and safety <laughs> moment off morning office chair <laughs> it's always good in this household we've always got homeopathic arnica and many different um that really would have helped my broken pelvis wouldn't it now <laughs> uh, do you know what shame on you if you were secretly thinking i and hoping i'd fall off the chair just for a bit of fun this morning shame on you <laughs> Thunder Duck is saying hammer that like button. There you go. Audio quality is a bit of an issue. Paul Richards, whatever you guys are on, can you send us some this morning? Yeah. Oh it is um, um, not enough sleep is is probably what we're on. Yeah. In mine and GMP's defense, um, I don't know what Doug Hughes is saying there. Is that about someone peeing into the water? Three peas in a pod. Good morning, Carl. Uh, excuse me. Are you handling all the comments now, Carl? How yes. rude. See how annoying Wait. it is. <laughs> I'm just going to press any random comment I feel like now. Let's have a look. Okay, go on. Then you take over. No, I'm kidding. I mean, you called my bluff there. Really good. I see what you did there. Very good. As, Pretty as country were, saying, make, make, a reserva- make a reservation. Everything I have had there has been delicious. Clams in a Thai broth, crispy pork belly, short ribs. The menu changes often. So, Clams yeah. in a Thai broth. That just sounds amazing. That sounds like yeah. a great folk song, doesn't it? I've, I've got, I, I want to do a song for you now. It is called Clams in a Thai Broth. I just need to get the note right. I once did have clams in a Thai Broth, my friends. Uh, it's, it's, it sounds really good, but I'm already smelling the kind of um, the kind residue. of after after residue of it. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl has a bit of an issue when he, he um, consumes bivalves anyway thunder duck great lemonade this morning um owen is saying hola mr and mrs m goodbye uh you know right back at you i am mont isn't that nice dougie what's that about do you know what that's about carl sounds like an r&b singer but it's actually a place in spain i think okay tom yum is a good name for a soup i do like a bit of hot and sour myself and susie's saying sluggy james i can't remember the name of the toothpaste i think it started with p <laughs> anyway, so I think all that important business is over and done with. So should we? Do you, um, do you know where the applause button is? Uh, no. That's not it. Try another one. I got there in the end. Okay, bring him on. <laughs> no, not that one for our guest. Okay, oh let's bring on. Okay, right. The time has come. It's go. really important. Let's bring on Joao. Come on. Woo! Hi there. Hello, everyone. How are you? Getting groovy today. 
<laughs> I'm fine. And you? I miss his M. Oh my gosh. Um, Carl? Carl, you got blonde today. Oh my gosh. Hey, Mrs. M, where's your hair? <laughs> <laughs> you let your beard grow, Mrs. M. We can explain. I'm confused. <laughs> no worries. No worries. It's fine. It's fine. How are you on this fine morning? How are you? I'm I'm great. It's an oblivion out there. It's something really wow, wetty. Uh so but 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 I'm great. I'm I'm here on uh, on my shelter, so doing fine, doing perfect. And hopefully uh, all our audience will be yeah yeah it's it's crazy crazy raining after this draft yeah. uh, drought uh, year it's it's really it's really crazy so uh, i think last, last uh, month i i told everybody that uh, the, the the new weather model would be to rain a lot uh, for for a few days and then without raining no absolutely not this year it's uh, absolutely the opposite and and i really don't remember a year that is raining all and uh, all the weeks one after the other so it's uh, it's something that uh, uh, we need to adapt fast i guess yeah yeah, on this yeah management. to um, manage all that extra water yes uh, have... if we are prepared to if we are can get really <laughs> it can uh, really get uh, us in trouble but uh, but if we are prepared uh, would be well Wonderful. For those that uh, have made the lakes already, uh, those will be happy. For those that haven't, uh, maybe they are having some some even stuff. So, uh, but it's cool. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, even awesome, I would say, because uh, oh, then awesome. also uh, if if we have rain, all the wells will be will be filling and uh, and and therefore also the the boreholes over the wall but the world will be so so hopefully yeah. Yeah. it will be um a reserve for for next years i guess hopefully yeah yeah absolutely so um you're here this morning with us to talk to us about finding the land where do you want to start with that well um i think finding uh, uh your own land should start on yourself so uh you should uh, know uh, a bit more precisely uh, what are your uh, goals what are your objectives what do you want from the land what do you want from life and then yeah. uh, find or search uh, the land that would suit you better you know so for instance yeah. hello oh my gosh that's better now <laughs> good guys <laughs> That's awesome. So, so uh, I guess if you if you really like agriculture, then you need uh, it's flatter, uh, preferably near a riverside, uh, and then you can uh, have uh, what, what we call here varzia, uh, these flatlands around uh, um, around rivers, and then uh, you can get some very good agricultural land. But if you mm -hmm. want a uh, house in the forest then a hillside will be good enough and maybe even better than, than a, a, a more plain side. Uh, so want, uh, some, um, if you want to be forgotten by, by, by the rest of the world, then uh, yes, also a, a valley, uh, slopey sides could be great for you. Uh, but if you want to be uh, near your community, maybe you need to make some, some uh, uh, some um what what's what's the word some some compromises uh, you know and and finding a land that can suit uh, your dream and your goal but also is aware of the community around that can be or, or a dream or you know uh, neighbors neighbors <laughs> so for instance if you are a, a, a biological uh, a prone person uh, for biological agriculture then if you are buying land uh, in, in in a site that it is full of uh, vineyards and and, uh, and fruit gardens, uh, fruit orchards that are full of, uh, of um, phytopharmaceuticals, uh, that is chemicals, then it's not 
not the, the place for you to, to search your land. So I would say that the, the first thing to uh, start searching for your land, it's understanding what your goals are. And a lot of times that is where uh, I find most difficult to work with clients. It's because they actually know what they want. Uh, well, they, they do know vaguely, but then uh, a lot of times they do not understand uh, um, deeply what does that um, I would I would say for instance oh I would like to have some agriculture venture and stuff you know that's a full time job you know or if it's not a full time job it need you need to pay someone on a full time uh, basis uh, for instance you know and for 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 instance saying oh uh, I would love to have a, a house in the woods. Uh, and uh, and then okay, do you know that you're on a on a fire route, you know, on a, on a big fire route? So if you're in on a big fire route, just buying a land full of pines might not be a, a great idea, you know. So we need to find there a, a bit of uh, diversity, so you are more uh, uh, prone to to be able to survive a, a, a big fire. And your house, for instance, your housing, if you're on a, a beautiful place really love uh, and but you are on a big route or on a, on a, on a fire big route then you should um, try to see some some stone houses you know or, or geothermal houses that is semi burial houses so uh, it all starts on your dream it all starts on your view. once you do uh, have a vision then it's uh, pretty easy to find or at least for, for myself to do my job and uh, and to uh, well, people at the the type of land that suits better to to each one uh, to each every one of us. So, well, this is interesting, Joel, because we find out something new about you every time we talk to mm -hmm. you, and I want to find out exactly what it is you do for people. So, people are, and I might have missed this whilst I was moving studios, but mm -hmm. you are you are helping people um, adjust, adapt, or make more realistic their dream of moving to Portugal, right? And I'm guessing it's the sort of person who does maybe want to grow their own food, mm -hmm. maybe be in a little bit more of a rural location. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes that kind of brings a baggage or an unrealistic, um, unrealistic ideas with it. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're doing? You're helping people find, uh, ground, literally ground their dream into a Portuguese reality. Is that part of what Mushmore does? Yes, yes, yes. That, that's that's precisely. So we usually start by by a visit, by by an appointment, and uh, uh, in we we actually work on the on the on the personal level, on the human level, to understand what is the vision. So uh, because once established what the vision is, it's really really fast to to draw the the perfect plan for it. You know, and. Um, uh technically the the, the work is is uh, usually starts with the visit or or an interview or even before the visit the interview then the visit elaborates a plan okay and then uh, uh the plan uh, can be implemented uh, throughout uh, uh throughout the time and th that plan can can have uh, uh, um, can have uh, uh, fruit gardens can have uh, um vegetable gardens, pools, swimming pools, bio, uh, um, uh, stakeholder assessment are all, all around with the, with the city halls, with uh, the, the associations of uh, cultures of, uh, or forestries or uh, cabinets of, uh, uh, of applications. That is something that anyone that comes to realize because we are still on this uh, European average kind of flow that means we uh, do uh, receive a lot, lot of money from it. and uh, everyone that he, that is a resident here uh, can actually apply to it you know uh, if they want to invest and uh, that means that invest uh, usually at least for 50% uh, subsidized you know or, or supported but in some regions of the of the country can even go to 50% you know so so that's that's a big help but that help only is helpful if you do have a plan and if you do know what to do. And that's what we help uh, uh, clients to, to do. It's uh, uh, from what is their vision, how their vision suits the, the, the social uh, and environmental reality in, in the land. So, and um, just, just, just for ending, what we really 
would like to avoid, and also here by 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 your invitation, Carl, which is great, and I and I do thank you. Uh, it's um, a lot. Uh, I've seen going out from Portugal. Uh, they they came and then they go out and they go with their heart broken. You know, they 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 came here, they spent their money, wanted to 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 have uh, uh, to fulfill a dream, and then they had all these problems. You know, and. Uh, 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 for me, as I from 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 uh, from a far side, what I realized is that uh, the problem was not Portugal. The problem was the place that they choose the land. You know, uh, if um, you need to understand the values of the person, and if the values of the person do not fit the values of that particular uh, part of, of the region, choose the land just because the the, the 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 property was was really cool, you know, really beautiful, then it's a highly likely that this this marriage does not go go well you know because um, you cannot go to a very heavy conventional agriculture like Ribatejo if you love or or west even worse you know uh, if you love uh, biological agriculture or, or if you do and then oasis uh, within for instance uh, um, if you are in the in the in the west maybe you have some oasis in the hillsides that you that you have there in Montejunto, for instance, you know. So, but uh, if you're going to the more fertile lands, it's a nightmare because um, the agricultures every week go with their tractors spraying all this poison, you know, and that to your to your brain until you just it just that's, just that's tilts, you know, with you with all the situations. Go into rural Portugal. You're thinking, Sorry? "Wow, there's lots of farms around here. That must be a good sign," but not necessarily, as you're saying there. So that might be a, a rookie error number one. Is no. thinking because there's lots of growing mm -hmm. on. It would mean you could grow too, which you could, but you might be in danger of contamination from lots of pesticides and so on. Um, something else that I'm aware of, uh, with far less, a lot less experience and insight than you've got, but it's it's the one of people buying too much land. Mm -hmm. And presumably you save people from that problem as well, because people can be get really overwhelmed yes. somewhere that's too big and unmanageable. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. Thank, thank you for doing for making that question because it's uh, it's absolutely precise. And and they can be overwhelmed in several ways. They can be uh, personally, uh, humanly overwhelmed. Can be overwhelmed by the by the workers by the amount of workers that they they realize that they start needing. Uh, and they can be economically overwhelmed, and that's really a shame because it means that um, all that money um, is going to be wasted uh, instead of being investing that is generational and then that, that can stay for, for their kids and their grandkids and, and, and even people that uh, would buy that land futurally. So it's, it's uh, actually a shame and it's something very common, not only with uh, with expats, also with Portuguese, people do get, get uh, we, uh, to uh, have more eyes than belly in Portuguese. Ter mais olhos que barriga, more eyes than belly, you know. So um, that and 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 some of this stuff are really um, uh, hard to digest, you know. And sometimes it's just uh, of changing municipality. It's incredible, but it's true. So. Um, the work that we've done uh, choosing the, the housing from down is all but uh, casual, you know. We actually uh, choose the, the, the plot of land to make the casa, uh, which is in the end our, our, our field uh, stand, uh, you know. It's, it's, it's the place that everyone can see what we do, and if they like, we can implement it on, on, on their land, you know. Um, and uh, and uh, we choose. Uh, uh, we have places uh, that we could choose in Portugal. That would be Jerez, Montezinho, and Gardunha. Uh, those mountains, uh, they, they don't start exploiting lithium there. Uh, will be uh, the the, um, the three last places in Portugal that will you know. Uh, so. Uh, Water will be there on these three places, 
uh, and the, uh, where uh, where in the rest of the country they, it, it might just just run out uh, run out you know so that was the, the the first element that we choose the second element would be agricultural land because we need to perform uh, the solutions that we want to sell so we needed also the agricultural land it, it does have two hectares of land by a riverside then also the riverside because the riverside uh, allow us to have always water on the well you know if the you know, is feeding the well and then we don't we we, we will not uh, have shortage of water uh, until the, the river uh, and the river is really 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 near from the source you know so all these elements were uh, absolutely chosen and another element was chosen too because Cardunha uh, unlike maybe Montezino, and like maybe Jerez, at this uh, municipality that that is called Fundão, you know, um, and that you can know just by a visit. You just need to go to the to the ordenamento do territorio, uh, the territory uh, uh, planning uh, uh, bureau of any city hall, and you will understand immediately the kind of person of team that you have on the other side of the counter. You know, if yeah. uh, if you find those people that really want to leave at five o'clock, and if five o'clock do not have any patience for you, uh, be aware, be aware, because that might not be the municipality you're looking for. You know, but if you're going to a counter and the, the, the people behind are really happy to receive you, and they're really thrilled, uh, honestly and sincerely thrilled that you're even just. Uh, uh, seeing uh, that you could go uh, to their municipality, then that might be the municipality that you're looking for. You know, just do um, every time that you. Uh, uh, it's not just looking at the OLX. You know, it's not just Timo <laughs> Virtual that you just yeah. find this great plot of lands that are cheap. And uh, oh gosh, uh, 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 as you said, Carl, oh, directors that are for 90,000, it's such, such a bargain. Okay, but that bargain can actually be in a, uh, in a place with a very shitty, sorry for the word municipality, with people that really don't care about you, you know? They just yeah. care to live at five o'clock. Even better if they live at 4.30, you know? <laughs> and have some colleague to, 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 to nail their point you know the the the, the Howard card so it's um it's something that you should really be be aware that um yes the the, the land part but the social sociological part is extremely important because you're going to have to live there you know yes for, for years and years uh, and yeah. and yeah Sorry, we haven't got the best of connections. We've had quite a number of challenges this morning, but you're, what you're saying is so wonderful, Joao, and I think very important message for people. Um, and it's part of the culture of real estate, isn't it? And you know, the fact that houses are called properties now rather than homes, you know, we, we've shifted, haven't we, from living in a place where a family mm -hmm. might be for generations into a flipper home that you might be in for two years just so you can make more money mm -hmm. to move on to the next. Now, you know, that works in a sort of capitalistic sense, but I don't think it works culturally and socially or yeah, for some of the aims that we talked about this morning. Um, and, you know, that's if, if we're talking about mm -hmm. the regeneration and the renaissance in central Portugal of rural life, I don't think flipping homes and mm -hmm. just, you know, a bit of making a quick buck is what it's about. I mean, you know, fair enough, people will keep doing that. And there is an aspect mm -hmm. of the real estate market. Yeah is all about yeah. that but we've lost touch with a lot of the things you're talking about i mean how many estate yeah. agents and real real realtors um are going to be talking in the way you are in you know really getting a sense of the sociological impact both ways the impact you're going to make what sort of reception you're going to receive um, i don't think they're necessarily trained or, mm -hmm. or conscious of these things but this is what your company does presumably this is this is the the holistic view yes. you're taking yes 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 exactly 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 because uh it's it maybe it's not even on the ethic part but it's a uh, this um what one one of the big uh, real estate companies uh sending us all this kind of 
uh, they wanted to sell, but we didn't want it to buy that. We said to the guy, hey man, it needs to have a, a river, you know, a river go going through the year all year around the river and needs to have agricultural land guess what we uh, he just sent us and called us in then kilometers and hours and days seeing plots of land that actually wasn't at all what we asked for you know so they are always trying to what they have and not what we want you know so you, you have very few and um and maybe we could we could uh, invite I, I i actually trust from a from a real estate uh, company that is called wolf or loba or lady wolf uh, uh there but actually it's the only one that i know that search the house that you want you know all the others have this 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 package of uh, uh, uh offer to push uh, all that offers uh oh hello hello hello, hello. We, got we can hear we you can hear. hello hello aha, aha, aha. <laughs> I, I've got a, a question. Uh -huh. Okay, push the, what they have and not what you need. Yeah, yeah. Come on. There's there's some chatter in the in in the um, chat room um, from Solar Life Portugal, which is Pete, and he's saying that um, near a river is problematic mm -hmm. as all river is owned by Portuguese government and is subject to both compulsory purchase orders and also in Joao's um, region there, there might be pollution. He's also added uh, it mm -hmm. has caused a few issues for people that they know and also it's really important mm -hmm. to get a good lawyer as otherwise these are the sorts of issues you can miss especially with spain threatening to cut off the river rivers flowing into portugal have you come across that at all um in the work that you do or what would well, you add uh, yes no it, it's not it's not unfortunately it's not unfortunately uh spain has even a, a tighter rule on the rivers that even the margins are not from uh, the, the landowners, also France, also Germany. Not unfortunately, it's very fortunately because otherwise, uh, solar life, otherwise you would not have water anymore if the if the rivers landowners, you know, because you get greed, you know, and once you get greed, that's why we have democracy and uh, a, a state ruling of the, the citizens, you know. And uh, and even so, we pollute so much the water that is from public uh, domain, you know. So it, it's fortunately, what is unfortunately is that um, we have a, a, a very stupid, unfair law that, that applies for Terry to um, to to manage the 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 the, the river margin and uh, the 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 landowner how to manage a, a river margin. You know, and it's something that the state should be doing because if the water is from the state, then the margin should be also uh, 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 ecologically by someone that knows about it. That could be the ICNA for the APA or the or the municipality if they absolutely. You know, so what we do have it's a very stupid and unfair law that oblige the landowners to do something, not know how to do so. You know, they do not know to think ecologically or strategically or generationally, you know. So, so is, is uh, it, because if you cut the trees, it's okay. is, tell me, tell me. I was just going to say, so it's important to know um, local bylaws and, and sort of understand it yourself if you are going to mm -hmm. own land um, very close to a river. It's actually brought up a bit of conversation in the chat room because people are comparing it to um, in, in the US, you know, um, uh, Gene is saying, um, I had an environmental science professor back in the 90s who predicted that someday wars would be fought over water rights. And I do know that Nestle, amongst other companies, were suing locals for even <laughs> collecting rainwater because they were saying, well, that rainwater should be going back into the rivers and we own the rivers yeah. now. Um, so therefore, you can't even collect your own water. Mm -hmm. So. I think this is part of a much bigger conversation. Um, I'd like to um, just ask mm -hmm. you, uh, I think, right at the start when you were talking about buying mm -hmm. land, it occurred to me, um, like, how have people traditionally interacted with the land? You know, like I see um, when we drive through central Portugal, I've noticed that there are um, 
old, lovely old couples with wheelbarrows or a tractor, and they appear to be working on land that's not where they live. Is that how it's traditionally been? Because I think a lot of people moving here have the idea that they want to live mm -hmm. on the land that they are managing. Um, and I'm just wondering if if that is such a good idea. I mean, from my perspective, mm -hmm. kids, it makes sense that I can just pop onto my land and get what I need and then go back into the house whilst watching the mm -hmm. kids. But is, is that actually practical? You know, do you... Um, recommend having land where you live or uh, is it actually better to you know have your home and then land nearby I mean how, how do people normally do it no 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 actually actually no uh, so one thing is one thing another thing is you do have culturally um, the, the tractorists okay mm. it's uh, even the social figure the tractorist and the tractorist is so uh connectable with the concepts uh of redneck redneck is those guys that have this redneck because they, they are always you know mm -hmm. uh, and usually very very often uh they have zero zero ecological knowledge okay. or minus 1000 ecological knowledge you oh, know okay. what they do is um they, mm -hmm. uh, all this strategic thought goes to uh to to selling their hour on the tractor you know and what they do is uh killing uh in then one hour they can kill trees because they just run over it and they just smash it you know and uh, what uh, then you saw uh, or and 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 uh, other have saw uh, see in portugal uh is that the tractorist is called to everybody that does not have a tractor you know it's called to 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 the land you know and different ways of managing the land with tiling no tiling with brush cutting no brush cutting but different ways of this dis destroying uh, ecosystem services uh that allow plants to grow you know as they are destroying plants do not grow so much you know but then the uh, uh, will stop growing and all the bushes will restart uh, uh remaking the ecological services that are lost so uh, once they get the tractor, uh, uh, the, the, the tractorist to manage their land, they will have uh, uh, um, here less soil, less organic matter in the soil, and and uh, a more uh, uh, more pro more fire prone landscape year after year. You know, and and they're even paying for it. So they're even paying for someone destroying. Another situation even is the baldius. The baldius are and that were never sold by the state to um to 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 uh, private uh, landowners okay so private landowners around made this a group of people called confraria or or group of confrades you know confrad like a, a semi brother you know semi brother in arms so, you know and mm -hmm. and they have this council you know and uh, it, this kind of people with zero ecological knowledge, with zero ecological uh, awareness, or maybe a bit or the other, but usually the group itself does not have uh, um, really a, a generational uh, perspective or, or strategic uh, uh, thought, you know. So what, what they're doing is they're managing this uh, public land or semi-public land on uh, uh on the burden so what is the culture that will give us more money in the next years that's the culture that we will have you know and if we do not have a culture and we're just out the bush to burn to make electricity it's fine for us because we are seeing the land on the perspective of doing money right now not money within semi for our kids and for our grandkids money right now you know that's why we are spending our time that's where I, why we are spending our energy to make money the soon and um uh, and so for I, I believe that for an expect it kind of seems that other people is managing the land owners but it's not precisely like that so but if you do have your house inside your property think about it you know 
Uh, in the pandemics, we all understood mm -hmm. that if you have a flat, a 30 a square meter flat, then you have 30 square meter. You know, if you have a, a vivenda uh, of a, a, a villa of one, uh, 150 square meters, then you have 100 square meters of freedom, you know. But if you have a plot of land of uh, two hectares, then you would have two hectares of freedom, you know. So, uh, uh, and you know, managing your natural resources also on the energy point of view, absolutely the land will help you mm. to, to have more resources from <clears throat> solar, from wind, maybe even from water, maybe even from geothermal, you know, maybe even from biogas and biodegestible stuff, you know. So uh, absolutely, I would advise everyone to have uh, uh, the, the, um, the piece of land, understand that they realize that they can manage. It's not overwhelming for the budget. It's not overwhelming for the time and, and, and for the objectives. But all the natural res resources that will help him to or her to uh, achieve their goals, vision, you know. So having that land, it might be on a on a on a big blackout. So what uh, about Gina? Uh, she was telling about this war stuff. What we do know about history is that all empires fall. Capitalism will also fall. It's history. You know, it always happened like that. So this kind of uh, a social system will also be eventually uh, um, substituted by another one. And since it started two centuries ago, uh, we know that it's, it's likely to be near its end than, than it's not, you know? <laughs> so uh, what will uh, actually will happen is that Nestle will I uh, absolutely as they are doing already to manage the state resources like army like police but when even those guys in the army and even those guys in the police will say i'm not shooting a bullet to a citizen that could be my brother that could say that could be my yeah. son that could be my father i'm just shooting against you fucker you know so sorry for the for the, for the effort and uh, uh and <laughs> and, and actually the situation if they do think it's going to work uh, just look at history and uh history it's made of rebellions made of rebels and it's uh, made wow. of systems substituting other systems amazing man uh, the spirit of 74 i think now we have had uh, an amazing conversation with you albeit um dogged by some technical problems <laughs> Now, what I think this, the conversation that we've just had, and I want to, I want to talk to Paula, who's patiently waiting for us in, in the green room, not, not far from you in central Portugal in Goish. Um, but I think this is a sort of conversation that lends itself to a webinar, um, you know, a, 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 an hour of discussion and, and mm -hmm. presentation of, of, of all the aspects that you've talked about. And of course, the political dimensions and how people might work together cooperatively. This, it's, been, it's always so rich when you join us in, in information and insight. Um, and you know, growth of consciousness, sure. I would say. So I thank you for that. But I think we're, we're we're really challenged this morning in being able to hear you and have a decent conversation. So maybe we could call it um, a day at, there at this point. But you know, commit to doing a maybe an evening special mm -hmm. where we can really go into this because the 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 aspects of buying land and property that you've talked about are not what normally gets discussed. This is really rich information and really useful to people. And um, you yeah. know, I think. On the one hand, it's very mm -hmm. practical and helpful to save a lot of stress and pain, but it's also a real investment in the future. And my, you know, what the, the thing I'm really keen to be a part of and what, what, what I love so much about Portugal is the preservation of the great rural tradition, which I realize I have a really romantic view mm -hmm. of um, that is, you know, we, we get it. But even what we're seeing seems to be a, a kind of dumbed down or a capitalized version of what is there. But we understand it energetically and 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 we want to be part of sort of preserving and 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 maintaining and, and regrowing that tradition here. So I'd love to do that with you and, and have a you know, even a we 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 should after we've yeah, done the webinar, yeah, perfect, we, we move on to a weekend or a conference or something. There's so much in this to, to talk about and to develop. So mm -hmm. So far this morning, Joel, thank you so much for yes. being with us. It's, it's kind of difficult. It's great being able to hear you when you're talking, but it's thank very you. difficult to have a conversation. So, But thank you so much.
Yeah, thank Take you, care. Al. Um, thank you. Wonderful. Thanks for answering thank you my both. questions. Thank you both. Appreciate it. And that's why, so, friends, we no, have no, no, thank a you. great oh. idea. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. We, we have a gardening Q&A every Monday evening. I'm going to do an advert for it now while we change over here. And, and thank you, Joao. And we'll see you again. Well, I think I've got a feeling we're going to be seeing you before you. Uh, a month's time. We so we, 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 we'll come and see you. We need to talk, I think. <laughs> we need to talk gap. much, Carl. Okay, thank mate, you so much. This is yeah, have a great we'll day. See Great to see you too, both. Right. Um, let's give her a nice round of applause. Let's. We. We. Got, it is like musical chairs and almost like a carry-on film here this morning. Let's uh, uh, say thank you very much indeed to Joao who joined us of Mushmore.net. If you uh, are interested in what he was talking about, why not visit that website? Uh, M U S H M O R E. Mushmore. See, nice play on words there. Um, and uh, find out what's going on over there at mushmore.net and have Joao help you with your uh, rural idyll and dream here in Portugal. Uh, let's remove that from the screen and a nice big round of applause for Paula Svensson. Good morning to you. Oh, live from your lovely studio, Paula. How are you this morning? Hola, bon dia. Tudo bem? Bon dia. I, I'm very good this morning. Uh, very glad to be here. And... Uh, I have to say before we get into my stuff that I'm so delighted that you changed Troubleshoot Tuesday to Inspiration Tuesday yeah. for two reasons. One, because, you know, I'm here. And two, because yeah. uh, I just had this great conversation yesterday with a bunch of people from the Charter for Compassion. And we were talking about the importance of language and how so often when we're looking at the world today, we're looking, we focus our language on the problem aspects instead yeah. of the solution aspects. Yes. And I think inspiration is the solution to the things we're trying to troubleshoot. So well said. So I have got this banner, which I'm going to change now and <laughs> get rid of that. And you know, it's, it's it's kind of understandable how this happens, isn't it? We see this with the kids of Extinction Rebellion at the moment, don't we? Like shutting sure. down motorways and stuff, and they get into their emotions, and it's completely understandable why they're so cross and angry and upset. And uh, we can also see that um, as they do that and they they occupy a motorway, that just makes other other people even more emotional and upset. And it, um, whilst we understand their motives, I think it may probably not be the best way to go about it. And inspiration and cooperation and collaboration seem to be the way forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So let me change that banner right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, well, you and I are talking this morning because uh, we have mutual friends, not even in Portugal, I think, who said, oh, well, you should speak to Carl and Luisa about Good Morning Portugal. You've got an exhibition coming up. You should talk to those guys. So here you are and doing that. So thank you to those mutual friends. Tell us about yourself. I think you've been in Portugal for four years. Is that right, Paula? Yeah, just over four years. Um, before I was here, I was living on a Greek island. Um, okay. and, uh, and I've lived all over Europe. Czech Republic and uh, uh, Germany and uh, Poland and I lived in Tunisia for a while and Turkey so I get around um, but I ended up in Portugal uh, and the the land is a huge part of why the I grew up in the upper Great Lakes region in the forests of and river country of uh, surrounding the Great Lakes in Minnesota and Wisconsin and um, and this uh, this felt like home. It's got everything. It's got mountains. It's got forests. It's got rivers. It's got ocean. Um, it's got everything. Yes. And uh, it's it's not uh, incorrect, I think, to call you a naturally inspired artist, therefore. And um, you, this is where people can have a look at your work. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll also share the screen so that we can have a look at your beautiful work. Um, so, yeah, you're taking inspiration from, I mean, even though Portugal, relatively speaking, you know, compared to where you're from, is actually quite a tiny country. It's got it all, hasn't it, in the way that you describe it? Yeah. yeah, it really does. And why and, Goish? Uh, hmm? Why Goish? I mean, I've been there. I've swum in your lovely river beach. I think it's beautiful there. Uh, what made you choose that part of the world? Well, uh, I, I suppose um, we looked around, and, and to be quite honest, we couldn't afford p p property at the ocean, which would have been my first choice. 
Uh, and so we looked around and just fell in love with this area. And I'm actually in Villanova de Cairo, which is part of Goish Conselio. Oh. And um, and the town the town itself is actually kind of flat, which was uh, <laughs> which was a consideration. Um, and uh, it's a it's a proper little village. It's got a grocery. It's got a pharmacy. Uh, it's got a hairdresser. It's got a couple of cafes. Um, there's flower shop, uh, there's a news agent, you know, so you can, yeah, there's, there's butcher, you know, you can be in the village and live, um, which during the pandemic, especially was extremely helpful. Yes. Um, and, uh, it's walkable and there's, it's just surrounded by the most beautiful, beautiful nature, uh, yeah. everywhere. So yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. So you're constantly inspired then as you go about your daily life. Absolutely, absolutely. My, I've got two windows in my studio that look out at different parts of the hill country and forest. And um, in back, there's another little mountain. And um, yeah, <laughs> another little mountain at the back of the house. How lovely! Um, and, yeah, and um, I see we may share a, 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 a joint love of herons here. Oh um, yes. <laughs> oh, they're magnificent. I mean, I, I, as I was um, spending my, what, uh, 20s, 30s in, in, in England, in, in a northern town called Sheffield, I'd go for a walk through the valleys, and it would be extremely special to see a heron. And I think in recent decades, they've become a little bit more, um, not tame exactly, but a little bit more used to humans. And I'm delighted to say that having moved to Portugal, they're even more abundant over here. Uh, I'm seeing the things that delighted me in the UK in greater abundance here. And only on Sunday, uh, I saw, you know, my, my son, knowing that I love heron, said, oh, there's a heron coming in, Dad. And the, the heron joined the, the gulls. But a little, obviously, you know, solitary hunter joined joined the, the gulls on the estuary who are noisy and seem to be partying a bit further down the estuary. Heron takes his place <laughs> further upstream, stands there like a Chinese philosopher. Um, they are magnificent. Looking very beautiful. Yes, and you 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 have uh, captured their magnificence beautifully here, uh, Paula. Oh, thank you, thank you. I love them. They're one of my favorite birds to paint. I like to paint birds anyway because they live in the uh, habitats I love. Um, but herons are a, a special favorite, and and I agree about Portugal. I've seen more herons here than anywhere I've ever lived, um, and. The, the big heron nests and things it's just magnificent it's like sometimes yeah. when i take the train i take the train a lot and sometimes when i take the train it goes through areas where where there are heron nests on both sides of the tracks because you're going along a, a river bank and it's just makes my heart sing me too we're, we're on the same wavelength with that and jays as well jays I, i'd see a jay maybe once or twice a year in the uk and here, again, a greater abundance of jays. And I find them both auspicious birds, the heron and the jay. There's a little sign of some, something great to come. And maybe that was you today, uh, having seen a heron on Sunday. Have you always been um, an artist? Or has being in Portugal given you the space to develop your, your craft and skill even more? Well, a little bit of both. Um, I've always been an artist. A lot. I spent a lot of my life uh, doing design work for theatres and opera companies and things like that and also teaching in artists in residence programs in various kinds of institutions cool. from prisons to old folks homes and schools and things oh, um, because the girls got to make a living and <laughs> selling art isn't the easiest way to do that um, but now that i'm uh, uh, retired from the rat race part of life um, but not from the art part i i get to spend a lot more time in my studio and i paint pretty much every day um yes. and not all of it is worth sh sharing with the rest of the world but it you know it's a uh, it's an ongoing process art is a lot about process um okay. and i think art and creativity are part of it, it's part of the problem solving process um yeah. and i'm i'm a passionate believer that that we need more more creativity that everybody needs to be more connected both to nature and to creativity because Ooh, that's what well save us. Yes, save us. Wow. I mean, this is this is important talk, and it's not disconnected entirely from what Joao was saying earlier on. Exactly. Now, yes, and we have the same themes running here, don't we? Because it looks like art has become a sort of capitalistic uh, colony where um, art is about what you can 
um, become good at, then sell and make a living from. And that's just a tiny yeah. part. How can, you monet, how can you monetize your art? I mean, that's what you see over and over again on Facebook, on Instagram, everywhere. You know, do this to monetize your art. Do that to monetize your art. I don't want to monetize my art. Yes, I like people when people pay me and yeah. and take a painting into their home and love it. That, yeah. But that's the important part of the process, the them taking it into their home and loving it and it connecting them back to something that is either missing from their life or that they remember or that they want aspire to those are the things that are important to me the money it pays the bills yes but the the, the inspiration lasts long beyond the transaction at least that's my hope yeah well uh, of course it must if something as beautiful as you've created on the screen here stays in somebody's home that's going to be so much more important than the the uh, haggling that took place to buy it in the first place and i'm hoping that one day you know in this in this shift that maybe that joao was alluding to you know it, it, life seems to be about 80 20s doesn't it and you know at the moment it would seem that most things are 80 percent dominated by monetization and commercialism and capitalism and if you're lucky 20 percent of it is in the joy and the, the word you use, the process. Now, we might move towards more of a, a way of being where we have 80% process and 20% housekeeping and, uh, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's so everything's functional. Of course, there's nothing wrong with people um, exchanging money and trading and so on. That is the basis, uh, a very important basis of human life, interaction, communication, communities. Um, but could you say more about this process idea? Because this would be a preoccupation for a young person getting into art and craft, wouldn't it? It's how do I monetize? And they might miss the whole journey of what they learn about themselves in the process. Can you tell us more about that? Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, there's two there's two aspects to that. One is what you discover about yourself, and the other is what you discover about whatever art or craft it is you're pursuing. Oh yes. Um, and that doesn't matter whether what you're pursuing is making a perfect garden, um, or whether it's making a, a beautiful piece of art or a song or uh, the great novel uh, of the 21st century or whatever it is. Um, it's, it, you know, the, the product comes because of the process. It's not, it, they, they say that everyone wants to have written a book, but nobody wants to do the work of writing one. <laughs> and I think that applies to an awful lot of things that we do. We want the achievement. We want the, the gold star. We want the, the Emmy on our mantelpiece or the Oscar or whatever. Um, without all the all the stuff that comes before it. But the stuff that comes before it isn't just hard graph. The stuff that comes before it is rich. Uh, it's the place where we explore, and it's the place where we learn, and it's the place that makes us different from the next person who maybe has the same kind of talents or the same kind of thing but has a different outlook, has a different view. We all have an individual view on the world. and that's what the process helps us discover is how we fit with the world. Yes. And I just think it's so, so important to um, allow ourselves that. I, I, I know people who, who said us, who have younger people who are in the arts, who have a, a very urgent need to monetize everything they're doing, but who have, made the commitment to themselves to set aside uh, a morning a week or a, a, a week of the or a weekend every month or something where they just get to explore, where they get to play, where they get to do process. I've got hundreds of sketchbooks in my studio. This is a this is a little one. Um, and you know it's got some pretty things in it. I'm just gonna give you the full screen there. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's also got some things where I'm just kind of you know, messing around, looking at shapes and forms and playing with color and stuff. Um, yeah. It's all, you know, it's all part of process. And yeah. it's, um, you know. Well, I'm saying that. I'm seeing an amazing metaphor here because it, what, what you seem to be saying or what certainly what, how I'm resonating with what you're saying is that in many ways, the art, art itself is the art of being a human being. And it, may, and it takes many forms, doesn't it? And your form, and, and one that's quite obvious to human beings, is, is art and craft as self-expression, as the process of understanding and expressing life. But it doesn't need to be specifically a particular discipline, does it, or, or um, particular mechanism 
the, 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 the what what what, you, what you've described there so beautifully is the and something perhaps we're forgetting or don't pay enough attention to maybe for for our own health and well-being is the the play and the process that's the important bit that there is of course there might be a product but there might not be and it's the that's the intangible bit isn't it nobody knows what you've been up to when you've been in your workshop and in using your notebooks and your journals um, they they they're ju judging you i guess by the finished finished work but i guess what really makes a difference to you as a human being is the hours you are spending in the process and in the play yeah it's funny because people one of the questions people often ask is how long did it take to paint that <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, I've taken to saying 60 years because, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's all part of it. You know, I can only paint that painting because of all the things I've done already. Yes, absolutely right. Absolutely right. And, yeah. and I want to, I want to absolutely say it, second what you said about it doesn't have to be a form of a, a traditional form of art or craft or anything. I mean, what you do with Good Morning Portugal is a creative expression you pull together all of these disparate parts into a mosaic that resonates with people and communicates and allows people to communicate with each other. That's a form of art. That's a form of being human and expressing and communicating. I mean, if, if we're, even hermits communicated sometimes, you know, I mean, otherwise nobody would have known they were there and sought them out in their caves. That's right. Uh, the, the, the good hermit is the one that's never never found. But funnily yeah. enough, most, most of them seem to be, don't they? <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, superb. <laughs> We've got some lovely input. We must find out about when your um, your, your exhibition begins and what the theme is. But, but we have some uh, love for birds here from uh, James as well. I do love me some birds. Jays, crows, ravens, all part of the same family, extremely intelligent family. Great to watch, aren't they, of course? Um, oh, and going back to Joao, uh, Simon has visited the website uh, and you do educational courses in agroecology too. That's good to know. Thank you for that, Simon. Uh, the Corvids, of course, that, that family of uh, birds, they are incredible. Um, and I believe, uh, connected to what we're saying here, Paula, I believe, says James, that when you do what you love, the money will follow. Yeah, maybe. And um, it could take six years. I'm waiting. Years. I'm waiting for it to <laughs> So that's six years we're talking about, Paula. Don't worry, it's coming. Uh, creativity and art are not mutually exclusive. Some of the most creative thinkers I know do not paint or play an instrument. They find creative solutions. We can't help Absolutely. ourselves. Yeah. We cannot help ourselves. And I think when our self-expression and our creativity is thwarted, we know what that feels like too, of course. Um, ironically, a lot of those folks don't think they're creative because they don't paint or play piano. That's so true. And there is a great irony in that. Uh, James continuing, continuing, one could even argue that those creative souls who apply their creativity to any endeavor are artists in their fields. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love crows too, says Suze. And it's late for you, Suze. Thank you for joining us in Canada. Uh, lots here. So smart. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, the joy of any endeavor is almost in the process of creating. It's true, isn't it? And, uh, you know, if you get an end result, that's a bonus. Um, thank you, Joao. Uh, you sound like a good shepherd guiding those in a new wilderness. Uh, more feedback for our last uh, guest. And who is this? Mary McConnell, the wellbeing therapist. Good morning. I'm enjoying the conversation very much. Hello, Mary. Good morning to you. And John and Pam in the wee small hours on our compass uh, from John. Maybe talk to you later on this evening. Uh, John in the Portugal club. We'll have a chat about that uh, a little bit later on. John and Pam, lots of love to you in Colombia. Uh, the, the Colombia. What, Colorado. Why, do I, why did I say Col Colombia? Colorado. <laughs> there is probably a connection somewhere, uh, but not one that I can make immediately. No, and neither can Paula by, by the look of your face. <laughs> Colombia. I see you in Colombia this morning, John and Pam. How are you liking that? Right, this exhibition is coming up then. So, I guess from time to time, it is nice for an artist to bring all their work together in a theme and, and be appreciated and adulated and maybe even to let the money follow after after doing what you love and sell a few pictures. Tell us about the upcoming exhibition, Paula. Um, well, I'm very excited because it's at an incredible restaurant, which was actually mentioned earlier on the show, Place Goish. Um, fabulous, fabulous locally sourced ingredients, uh, an incredible selection of Portuguese wines. I just have to say the guys who run it are lovely. Uh, Chef Neil is amazing. And uh, I recommend anybody to go there anytime, but especially to come this Friday, <laughs> because that's when my show is opening. That's and uh, we're having a uh, opening 
do reception uh, starting at 3.30 on Friday until the wine runs up, which, you know. Uh, four, four o'clock. I know what you uh, said. Depends on how many said. people show up. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we'll be there. I will be there for sure from 3.30 till 6.30 at least, um, later if we're having fun. And, uh, yeah. So, um, the theme is, uh, is forests, basically. Uh, and everything is forest or tree theme. The critters in the forest as well as forests. Um, I have a series of paintings about ghost forests, which are um, something that I was inspired to paint based on the loss of habitat, forest habitat in sure. far too many places. And I, but I wanted to do it in a way that I hope was beautiful and would make people um, feel the almost a sadad kind of thing about the forests rather than a, a, an anguish about forests. And um, yeah, so and that's, that's what's okay. happening. And I'm excited about doing it in that venue because it's in the middle of a forest on the River Serra at Pegas Oscuro. Um, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful setting for my work and great food and great people. And I hope to see lots of you there. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, and I, I really liked what you said there about, um, you know, turning the anguish into, into expression again, because that's another thing uh, that we can associate with art, isn't it? Is that transformation of some of the what you might call the the, the the darker feelings into into inspiration and light, which is where we came in when we started our conversation. Uh, Marcus, go, go, go to play Squish. Uh, we are having a special event lunch in there today, and I am so looking forward to it. Please mention Good Morning Portugal there, and hopefully play Squish will invite us to broadcast from there and have breakfast. It sounds like it'll be a fantastic breakfast. Uh, they both start with COL. There you go. So on an airline tag on your luggage, uh, your, your, your um, luggage could end up in Columbia, Colorado. Hopefully not in someone's colon. Um, I think, yeah, I think a deja vu moment. I don't know why that is. Uh, my lifestyle requires creativity in many aspects of it constantly. Wouldn't have it any other way, but I think I'm in a minority. Suze, I've seen you um, live your life and you do live life creatively. You are an improviser. Um, that's how Suze rolls. I, I've had the pleasure of being in clo close proximity to Suze when she was here in Portugal. And you live your life like a work of art, Suze, I have to say. Um, and you you take it to the edge, you, highs and lows. I, I'm sure you won't mind me saying that. And I know you did a bit of improv it, with the great Robin Williams back in the day. And that is how you live your life, I would say. You are an artist in life for sure, Suze. And uh, Marcus, also looking forward to seeing your art during the next visit there. So lots of reasons to go to play Squish, including the fabulous food and the wonderful artworks. Talking about then the anguish, the darkness, self-expression to help that to uh, turn into inspiration, transform alchemically into, into inspiration, perhaps. Uh, a lovely, uh, this is Victor Hugo, I think, isn't it? Even the darkest mm -hmm. night will end and the sun will rise. Uh, so beautiful um, to see the, um, the embodiment there. Um, of, of that uh, inspirational quote. What would you say as we finish now, uh, Paula, which I'm sorry to do, but uh, we're coming up to 10 o'clock. And I think you've, you, you might have a few, if I know artists at all, you might be, you might be tinkering with a, few, with a few things in these next few days to get ready for the exhibition. Am I right? Okay. We might need to let you go there to do that. But what would you say? People might have been inspired by, by our conversation about art, creativity, the process. Anyone, you know, that's that, that terrible word that you must hear uttered. And when you've done workshops, I can't draw, I can't paint, I'm not an artist. What do you say to people who utter such blasphemy and how would you encourage them to get cracking? I would say everyone's an artist. If you can sign your name, you can learn to draw. Oh, wow. Uh, if you, it's true. And I can teach you, and I would be happy to. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's uh, uh, just pick up some things and play, you know? Uh, just go back to you know, channel your inner four year old. Yes. And go back and get some finger paints, get some crayons, uh, get some big fat colored pencils, and uh, make marks on paper. And when, and if people are thinking about that, think I couldn't do that that's silly that's childish that might be a re even bigger reason to do it right because there might be a little bit absolutely. of a or something there absolutely and you don't have to show it to anybody you yes. don't ever have to show it to anybody and if you like it you can put it on your refrigerator with magnets and that's your first exhibition 
Oh. Your first exhibition. You can even invite us around. Me and Paula will come and drink some wine with you at the, at the, at the sharing of your first work that has been stuck onto the onto the refrigerator with magnets. We'll be there, won't we, Paula? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for being here this morning. You you have a key to the studio now. Come and tell us when you're doing an exhibition again or when, if, every, if there's something you want to share, uh, from especially from your beautiful part of the world, Dan. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I will be there. Good luck. Bosort with the exhibition. Take care. Uh, bye for now, Paula. Thank you very much indeed. All the best with it. Ciao, ciao. There she goes. Zografis.com is the website there. Um, and I just need to make sure, take a breath, because as you, as, if you were here from the beginning of the show, you will have known that it was a, it was like a carry on film, uh, as I think as Simon was saying this morning. Uh, we've, we did, we managed just about to speak to Joao. We had a much better connection with Paula. I'm thinking if you, if yeah, if you're thinking where's the internet connection best in Portugal, it sounds like it's better in Goish than it is in Fundal. And I thought Fundal had that sorted, but it might just be a particular connection that Joao's house there. Normally he talks to us from a field, doesn't he? Uh, my inner four-year-old is busy learning Portuguese. That would make an interesting conversation. Um, just, you know, hola, bon dia. Oh, and then pointing in the sky, uh, an aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> I have not uh, established roots anywhere, says Suze. Cherish friendships from my travels. Social media is a blessing for keeping in touch. Hoping trying out settling down roots will be in Portugal. We keep we keep our fingers crossed for you uh, with that, uh, uh, Suze. And we look forward to seeing you again here. Uh, if you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. And if you can write, you can draw. Isn't that beautiful? An extension of what Paula was saying. Uh, it's like deja vu. Yeah, the Colorado, Colombia and Colon conversation. It's like deja vu all over again. And that's James, who is off to Lisboa in a few. Uh, might meet a few of you there at a Gumpa gathering. Greatly looking forward to it. Whilst we're talking about that, let me share onto the screen then uh, the Portugal meetup schools. We do have some additions. Uh, it might be a nice a moment to just tell you about some of the other things that have been added to the website. Um, I, I, it's been a long time coming and I've not known quite how to do it, but um, I have added uh, the beginnings of, you know, what do you call it? Like we were talking about it before, property, real estate. These are homes, folks. We're looking for homes, aren't we? We we'll want to feel at home here in Portugal. And certainly that's what me and Mrs. Emma committed to is helping people feel at home in Portugal uh, through the Good Morning Portugal show and the other work that we do. So I'm doing my best to present beautiful homes here that, I th that I'm personally inspired by. Do send any houses that you like the look of, even if, you, if, it, even if it's not for you, it might be for somebody else. But a lovely home. And, and what's very special about this is it's, in, um, it's a villa in Valencia Dominio. That hot spot, it would appear, in the north of Portugal. Um, there's a dream home from where we just came uh, in, in Portimao Val. Uh, that, uh, it's not really a suburb, is it? But near Portimao Val, uh, this is a lovely home. If you uh, are, are winning the lottery anytime soon, that'd be nice to have that, wouldn't it? And you could share it with the Gumpers. That's worth looking at on our new Portuguese Homes page, uh, where our featured property, there I go again, calling it property, our featured home uh, this week is that villa in Valencia Dominio. If you click on that and, and you have a look at the uh, listing and you have a look at the, our YouTube uh, slideshow of it, you'll find out some interesting information about uh, Valencia. That house might not be for you, but that region might be if you thought to yourself, I, don't, I haven't quite found the place where I want to go in Portugal. I need it a bit cooler. I need it near the ocean. Those sorts of considerations want to be fairly close to Spain. Uh, Valencia might be the place for you. Um, we've added, as, as Mrs. M said, that thing you do on Thursday, market thing on your website, that will be the Gumper store under the Gumper verse tab there. If I click on that and take you to the Gumper store, you can see that we've got new sections on indie media. Look at that beautiful magazine, Central Connects magazine. We'll be talking to Katie, the editor of that magazine, uh, I think next week, but certainly in the next couple of weeks, she's agreed to join us and talk to us about that new publication for Central Portugal, Central Connects. Beautiful cover, that, isn't it, with that unfurling sunflower there. Our old mate, Edmundo, in um, the Algarve. He's a taxi transfer guy, so we've got a transport and travel section. This is all early days here. Uh, it, it is a bit random and ramshackle, but our intention 
is coming straight from the heart to share with you the heart of Portugal and all the lovely independent businesses. So here they are, the ones that uh, Katia Lima, Beyond Lisbon, Katia Lima recommended to us. And there's Paula Svensson uh, there as well, just recently added to our artists and craftspeople section, which we've had to separate from our music section um, because that's growing as well. And guess what? Um, and on Thursday, when I like to play a little bit of independently produced and recorded music, Sophie Barker and Dan Abel allow, are allowing us to play their new tune. Sophie Barker sang the amazing chorus on Destiny uh, by Zero Seven. Her voice has been enchanting and delighting me for 20 years now, and it's a delight to play her track on Thursday. Where else was I going with this website here? I wanted to share something else with you. Ah, um, Portugal meetups. There you go. There's a tab there called Portugal meetups. Portugalmeetups.com will also take you there. There's our Gumperverse map, our Gumper map. And if we scroll down on that page, this is the meetup that uh, uh, James is going to later on today, 15th of November, of course. And at Taco do Pescador on Rua Pimenta on Pepper Street, uh, you'll be able to meet up with uh, Gumpers. That one organized by uh, Expats Portugal alongside another coming in a couple of days in Porto, everybody, and dads and some dudes, they're also on there. Remember, I interviewed uh, Shane Howard, from who's, who's the founder of Dads and Some Dudes, last week. There's our San Martino de Porto meetup. See you there Wednesday, Portimao, which happened last week. Quite a few. How are you getting on in Canada with your Vancouver, BC meetup information, the Lisbon Supper Club there, and, of course, Pam's Alcabasa meetup. So much to enjoy and uh, peruse at all the W's, goodmorningportugal.com, where you can also help us out if you want. If you want to support our endeavour here, uh, go along to uh, goodmorningportugal.com. And there are a number of ways of supporting the show. Thank you very much for being here this morning. Thank you, Joao. Thank you, Paula. And thank you, Mrs. M for, um, I was going to say, ruining the show earlier on with all those technical challenges between the two of us. We nearly broke it, but we survived in the end. So have a great day, folks. And uh, we look forward we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Where Who will I be speaking to tomorrow on Ask? It's Owen! See you tomorrow, Owen! And we'll be talking about food and probably I'll squeeze some drink in there as well uh, from Portugal. So uh, uh, language, culture and food and wine and drink and all those good things that we love about Portuguese culture tomorrow with Owen. See you then. Take care and bye for now. <laughs>